The Lolo Body Bar by Barmaids is an addictive and oh-so-decadent head-to-toe moisturizer made with all-natural skin-loving butters and oils. This amazing bar is most definitely one item that belongs in every fiber artist's stash. Working with yarns and fibers can be so rewarding even while it steals your moisture and leaves you raw. Lolo by Barmaids is luxurious, creamy, smooth, and so good for your skin. It's easy to use and there's never any leftover residue that could destroy your latest masterpiece. Protect and soothe your capable, beautiful, creative hands. Trust me, just try the Lolo Bar. The results speak for themselves. Hi and welcome to Knitting Blooms. Today is Saturday, January 21st. My name is Tina and this is episode number 39. How are you guys doing this week? I am doing pretty good. Um, I had a busy week this week. Didn't get as much knitting time as I would have liked because we were doing all sorts of things this week. We looked for, we bought a new washer and dryer, which is going to be delivered next week. And we've been interviewing companies to do um, foam insulation in our attic. So we've had a busy, busy week, and which means I did get a lot of knitting done in the evening. I drove home from the D.C. area on Monday. As you might remember, last weekend I went to go see my grandmother, and um, I do want to let you guys know that she's doing fairly well. She's in good spirits, and she is getting stronger day by day. And they are talking about doing chemotherapy now, so that's a good sign. Um, but yeah, I came home on Monday, so I spent, you know, a good eight hours in the car driving on Monday. And then on Tuesday evening, Steve and I went out to go look at washers and dryers. And that took quite a while. We went to like three different places. And the washer and dryer that we have are like 15 to 20 years old. I don't even remember when we got them. It was so long ago. And they were basic, basic models when we got them. So... To upgrade to a new washer and dryer now, there's so many features. I had no idea what features I wanted. All I knew is that I wanted to be able to felt in it. So we did end up getting a top loader so I can felt my slippers and any other felting projects because some of the people that I know who have front loaders can't open their washer mid-cycle so they can't felt. And... Some of my friends bring their felting to my house. So if I get rid of my top loader, then we're going to all be in trouble. So we did get top loaders. Plus we heard that some of the front loaders do have maintenance issues. We didn't want to have to deal with that. So we did. We ended up getting a, um, a Samsung brand that is, I think, one of the top rated Consumer Reports models. Anyway, so that got ordered Thursday night, We um, and that was another reason. We went Tuesday night to look for them, and then Thursday we went back and actually purchased it after going to several different places. And then last night, I had dinner with some friends from my old kickboxing class. I think I mentioned before that I used to be a kickboxing instructor, but if I didn't, I did. I used to teach aerobics and kickboxing for about 14 years, and then I decided that I was done, but I'm still really good friends with a bunch of the ladies that were in my class, and we try and get together at least once a year for um, some type of dinner or something that we can just get together and catch up with one another. So that's what I did last night. And this morning, we were interviewing more people for the insulation. Which is why I'm recording now, which is 4.30. I had planned on recording this morning, but Steve thought the insulation guy was coming at 9. So I didn't want to get up and get 
dressed and get ready to record, only to get interrupted. So I put it off, only to find out that the guy wasn't coming till 10. And then after that we went to go to Costco, and so now I'm recording now. So now that I've rambled on for, what, about five minutes about my week, <laughs> let's get into the knitting. Even though I didn't get a lot of knitting done, I do have some finished objects. And Sammy is going to go sit on them. No, we're not going to sit on them. Let me have them. We will start with the first thing. You going to sit on those bags? Here, here we go again with Cody in the thing. <laughs> Never fails. Anyway. <laughs> He's actually rolling around in that thing. So we'll start with the first finished object. And I only have half of the finished object here because the other half is actually was given to my sister the moment that I finished it. And that is, yes, you guessed it, another dishcloth. There was actually another dishcloth. It's pair, it's mate. Um, but I, like I said, I did give it to my sister. I was working on it at my mom's house on um, Sunday evening after I got back from visiting my grandmother. And she saw it, and she's like, well, what is that? And I told her, and she's like, oh, okay, you actually use that to wash dishes with? I said, yeah. I said, do you want to try it? And she said, okay. So I just finished, I was like, I don't know, 10 or 15 rows from ending. So I finished it off, woven the ends, and gave it to her before she walked out the door with the babies. Well, they're not really babies now. They're going to be six in May, but they still feel like babies. Anyway, so another pair of washcloths completed. That was last Sunday. Actually, yeah, I finished the one on Sunday, and I think, and I started the other one right after it, and I can't remember if I finished that one also that night, because then after the kids left, my mom and I sat and knit for a while and talked and what have you. So I either finished this one on Sunday or Tuesday. Anyway, then, while I was also visiting my grandmother. I actually did get some knitting done and I finished the Evane shawl. And I blocked it the other night. I blocked it to Wednesday night. I finished it at my mom's. I worked on it quite a bit when I was visiting with my grandmother. And then Sunday while the kids were still at the house, they were playing Wii and we were just supervising. I finished this up and it is quite big it is just about my wingspan and I really like it it grew quite a bit when I blocked it and I, I, I meant to do that I wanted it to stretch out because I did use a size 9 needle which is I think what the pattern called for and, um, but the stitches were very loose, which is nice because I'm finding that wool sh shawls are very warm. So even if they're a little loose, they still work out quite nicely. But the striping is beautiful. As you can see, you can see that it is, I, you, I think you should be able to see me through there, but, um, you can see that it is a looser knit. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the pattern as much. You'll see here, this is a seed stitch here, and then, yep, there's a little seed stitch part there. But it, it really came out nice. I really like this pattern. And this pattern was more of a kind of like a recipe versus a specific pattern. Cody, are you going to sit still? Okay, lay down. Which I kind of liked, and I, I did follow the pattern as it was written for the most part. At the end, I think the the designer had like 15 ridges of garter stitch, and I really didn't want that many ridges of garter stitch, so I just added an extra section of, um, I shortened the second to last section. I think, 
Oh, I think I, I knit it to this section right here just as it was written in the pattern. And then I changed the next stockinette section. I think it was another, I want to say 14 or 16 rows of stockinette, but I changed that to 10. And then I did another couple of rows of C stitch. And then I did, I don't know how many, I don't even know how many rows of um, stockinette after that. But I, what I did was I measured, I weighed my yarn after the stockinette, the seed stitch section the last seed stitch section. And I weighed my yarn and I think I had about 44 grams. So what I did was I knit stockinette until I got to 22 grams and then I started the garter stitch. And I did end up with about six rows. That was my pencil. Can we get it back please? About six rows of garter stitch at the end which worked out perfect because I didn't want the whole 15, 15 rows or 15 ridges. There's six, there's six ridges here. So I kind of cut it in half, which is perfect for me. And like I said, it blocked out beautifully. I still have my ends to weave in. I usually weave in my ends before I block, but lately I haven't been doing that. I don't know why. I guess because when you block it, everything stretches out and it might pull the end out. I don't know. So I have been leaving them out. But I'll weave those in today as soon as I'm done here. And this will be a beautiful, beautiful shawl to wear. I'm really not sure what color shirt I'm going to wear with it. I might have to go buy a new shirt. I'm thinking the, the gold, the gold color would look really, really nice um, to get a nice gold shirt to go with it. Or a very olivey green. I'm not sure. But like I said, I might have to just go and get... Now I have two cats on my lap. This would be mine. Get a new shirt to wear it with. Sammy, that is my water. So that was finished object number two. Finished object, I got cat hair in my eye. Finished object number three, which was actually finished this morning. And actually both of them were finished this morning. Another pair of dishcloths. This morning, like I mentioned, we were interviewing a company for our foam insulation and while we were chatting with the guy learning all about it and everything I was knitting on dishcloths and I finished one I think I was about halfway through on one I finished it I started the second one I was about halfway through the second one when he left and we were expecting another guy to come and I was working on the second one while we were waiting for him to show up. And I actually finished it before he showed up. And so now I have two. Actually, I have three because I have the other one. And I probably will be starting another one today as well. Um, I love these dishcloths. I love them. They're awesome. If you have never made a dishcloth, you need to try it. You need to try it. Just knit one. Just knit one. And you'll probably fall in love. But I'm going nutty with the dishcloth. So some more ends to weave in. And what I found today is that I'm still having just a, a few yards left of my yarn when I'm done after I've knit two. So... I'm going to have kind of like a Frankenstein dishcloth here soon because I've wound them all up onto a into a ball. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh one of my dishcloths to see how many grams it is. And when my ball gets to be that number of grams or more, I'm going to just knit up a miscellaneous washcloth with the leftovers because this one, this set that I did, I had quite a bit left over. 
Not so much with this one. I didn't weigh the ball afterwards. And then I pulled out another tiny bit of two more skeins that I actually... Two, yeah, two more skeins, another tiny bit of two more skeins, and a good chunk from the um, the pink ones that I did, um, I think, before I started this one. So, yeah, lots of dishcloths. Love the dishcloths. So those are my finished objects. And I did finally get my show notes up for last week. I did them this morning. Um, I don't think there was anything special that I needed to put on there this last week other than my updates on my yardage. But if there was something from last week's episode that you wanted to know about that I didn't put a link for, let me know and I will get that up for you. And I also put up my yard, I did put up my yardage for last week as well. So, whips. We'll go in order that's on my list. I did get started on my second stinky pink mitten. I don't know why I was procrastinating this so much. I got yarn every which way because I pulled this out of the bag to weigh it. I really don't know why I was procrastinating this much. I think it was because the cast on and the braided the braided edging on it required some focus. Once I got past that section I didn't really have to think so much because it's just a matter of following the pattern but the, those two things, the braided cast on and the twine edging, did require a little bit of focus for me. So I needed a time when I could just sit down and focus on it and get through those few rows and then move forward, which is what I did on Thursday. I sat down, I got those sections done, and then I proceeded to continue to work on it. This is actually the front of the mitten. And it's coming out beautifully. I figure I have to do approximately 8 to 10 rows per day on this in order to finish this mitten by the end of the mitten knit along, which is next... What day is the 31st? Tuesday? Wednesday? Something like that. So... And I do plan on getting it done before January 31st, and I'm hoping to get it done well before the 31st, maybe by next weekend, because I'd like to start some other projects, but I feel like I need to get some other things done that I've been trying to get done. I am really enjoying this mitten again. I, I love working on it. This bit, I think it's like about 20 rows. Actually, I think it's 24 rows. I think I'm one row short of where I need to start the thumb gusset. And this took me maybe an hour. Maybe an hour. So why? Why am I procrastinating? I don't know. I really, really don't know. But I will be getting more work on these done this week. And I'm already... Trying to figure out what my next mittens are going to be. Yep. Already working on it. So here's the first, here's the first mitten. The stinky pink mittens. And these fit, these fit so nice. I love them. And I can't wait to get the second one done so that I can wear them. They do seem so warm. So I am excited about that. So that is Stinky Pink, and again, you have to have two mittens completed for the knit along, and they have to be posted in the th in the finished object thread. Now, um, just like Magrathea, which is also finishing up this month, you must post your finished object in the finished object thread to be 
eligible for the drawing. And I have to write something down really quick. <laughs> I remembered something I needed to talk about, but I would probably forget it if I didn't write it down. So you must have your finished objects in the finished object thread for both Stinky Pink and Magrathea. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to keep those finished object threads open until the first recording in February, which will likely be, well, it's definitely going to be February 4th now. Um, so you will have a few extra days to get your finished object posted. So get those mittens and magrathias done so that you can be entered in a, into a drawing for prizes. Both of those are going to be drawn February 4th. So that's my stinky pink mittens. Like I said, I haven't I haven't hundred percent decided what you might what my next mitten project will be, but there will be another mitten project that will probably commence soon after I finish these. The next project that I've worked on a bit this week, just because I needed some mindless knitting for a couple of things, a couple of times this week, I picked up the more basic socks, which you haven't seen in a number of weeks. So there's my stitch marker, and I've done that much. Not too much. Here is the first one, which is sitting at the short row heel section. And again, I've got all my yarn tangled up because just before I recorded, I pulled everything out of the bag so that I could weigh my yarn and get my yardage. And everything is all twisted up on each other now. Anyway. So, here's the first sock, and it is at the short row heel section. I like to do my heels at the same time, so I work the first sock up to the short row heel, and then I hold it until I get the second sock up to the same point, and then I work the he heels together. And I think a stitch slipped off, so I needed to get that back on there. So this is the first one. This sock yarn is um, online. I think it's Super Sock. And this is the second one, and it shows my progress for the week. So, still a pretty decent way away from the short row heel on the second one. Quite a bit. A couple inches. Three, three and a half inches. This is kind of my on-the-go, mindless knitting project, work on it when I feel like it kind of thing. But you know what? I really want to get some new socks started. The sock yarn from Lorna's Laces, the Lorna's Laces Soulmate, it's calling to me. It's calling to me. But there's also some other sock yarn that's calling to me that I will show you in Stash Enhancement. <laughs> I'm so excited. Which I'm thinking that this yarn is going to, I'm going to be casting it on before I cast on my soulmate. But I'd really like to get these socks done first. I don't know if that's going to happen. But I really should. So, more basic socks. Got a slight bit of progress this week. Not so sure how much progress they're going to get in the coming weeks, but we'll see how that goes. Although Citron has kind of been on the back burner, I did work a few rows on it this week. Not much. A couple rows. There you go. A couple rows. I'm going to move my stitch marker. I think maybe about six rows. And again, this was another one of those things where if I needed some mindless 
brainless knitting. I just picked up the Citron. In fact, I'm going to pull those socks back out again and move the marker. But it's coming along. I um, am into section six. Not too much. Not too much got knit on this this week, but there was a couple, a couple times. I am going to seven sections and a ruffle, and the rows are already getting to be extremely long. But again, it is a good mindless knitting project when I need something that I don't need. I don't want to have to think about. And it's always nice to have those kind of projects. Except it just seems like right now I have too many of those type of projects on the needles. So that basic socks, Citron. And guess what? You haven't seen this project in a while. But look, I worked on Bacardi this week for about 20 minutes. <laughs> Not that long. But this is another one of those projects that is kind of mindless for me. I because I have the um, the chart and it's really easy. I just have to keep track of where those increases are, which are already marked on my chart. So there you go. Marker. And about six rows. Yippee doo dah. About six rows. So there's the Bacardi. These are my sleeves. I think the last time I showed this was the first week in December. So I haven't worked on this very much at all. But I am going to try and pull it back out again this week and get some more progress on it. I don't have that much left. I mean, we're talking sleeves. These are both sleeves, and then I'm going to steek them. And really, I don't know how many rows I have to do, but I want to say that I'm on, I don't even know what row I'm on. Anyway, I don't have that much more to go. And if I can get six rows done in about 20 minutes, just think what I could do if I just actually focused on this project and that will happen as soon as stinky pink is done because I definitely want to get that mitten done this month for the knit along but there's Bacardi it's kind of crunched up because it's been crammed in my bag but it'll all block out it'll be all good in the end and I love these colors I still have quite a bit. The only ball that I'm running short on is the light pink. But I don't even think I'm really running short on it. I The next few sections, I'm currently working with the light pink. And the next couple of rows, I think I have some big, big sections of light pink. But I didn't see any very much after that. So I'm going to try and get that moving right along this week as well. The problem that I'm having though is that I have been going crazy with the spinning. And I'm look I think I'm gonna break end up breaking my nail. I, I think I have a little hang nail there. Anyway, spinning. I think I showed this last week. Yes. I had this yarn ready to ply last week, and I was going to take it with me on the wheel to see my grandmother, and my mother said that really the room that she's in didn't really have enough room for a spinning wheel. So I didn't take my wheel with me, and so I didn't get to ply this up until I came back. I think I plied it on Monday night. I got back Monday night and when Steve and I sat down to watch some TV Monday night, I plied this up. And it's only about 15, 150, 15 yards. 115 yards. And it's a three ply. I did Navajo ply it. 
and I really like how it came out. And I would guess that it is a fingering, a fingering weight yarn. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm sure that I'll find something. If it's fingering, I think I can use it in my sock yarn blanket, which will be fun. It is BFL. And, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what I'll use it with for, but I think I'm going to put it next to some, um, some fingering yarn that I have for my sock yarn blanket and see how, how it lines up. But I'm pretty sure that it is fingering, and it is pretty even. I was really surprised at how well it was looking. I think it was a little overspun, though, although... After I block, after I wet wet it and soaked it and everything, it's pretty well balanced now. But when I took it off the off the um, bobbin after plying it and put it on the nitty knotty and took it off of that, you would not believe it was all twisted and kinked up. And <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess I over over applied that a little bit or over twisted it. Um, but I really like how it came out. I really like how, um, tightly of a twist it has now that it's, it's done. Some of my other older yarns, or not older yarns, but some of my previous yarns that I've done, I kind of look at and say, oh, that could have been twisted a little bit more, but I, I <laughs> that was Cody. I'm not sure if you heard him or not. Um, I can't say that about this. I really like how this twist came out. And I would say that it's, it is a four, I am pretty sure that it's a 45 degree twist. But it's really nice. I really like it. I just don't know what I'm going to do with the yarn yet. But I did Navajo ply it. And it looks really, really nice. And also, I am still working with the uh, Polworth from Blue Moon Fiber Arts. This is the second bump. And I haven't done too much with it. I've been practicing after Diane from the Knittables podcast did her spinning tutorial. I think it was last week. It wasn't this week. Um, she, she just looked like she was just so relaxed when she was spinning. I feel like I'm still have a death grip on my fiber when I'm spinning it. So I'm trying to relax a little bit as I'm spinning because I know you're not supposed to have a death grip on your fiber. So I'm pr trying to practice with that. It's not going so well. Which is why I'm going to be taking a drafting class at the Spinning Loft in February. Because I think that having somebody teach me the proper way will be a good idea. So I've been working on that a little bit. I haven't got too much done on this. I would say probably maybe a tenth of what I started with. But the other thing that I have also been working on this week, which again has taken away from my knitting time, is Yarn Hollow BFL and Tussa Silk. And guess what? I'm done. I do have to wind this off onto a bobbin, which I will be doing as soon as I'm done here. And I will have three bobbins, and I will be three-plying this yarn. So I'm very excited about being able to do that today. I will be winding this on onto a bobbin, putting them all on the Lazy Kate, and three-plying this today. I'll be getting it started. I don't think I'll finish it. But I'm very excited about getting this done. This fiber, when I first started spinning it, loved it. I still love it. It just felt like it took forever to spin because I spun the entire four ounce bump on my spindle. 
For those of you like Steve at Dramatic Knits, I don't know how you spend four ounces of fiber on your spindle. Now maybe it's because this is very, very thin with the Tussa silk in it. It's very thin. I mean, it's almost thread thin. This really is a bad area to show you right at the end because at the end I was really... Um, that's not going to quite focus. It's, it's just really thin. At the end I was just trying to hurry up because when the, when the spindle gets this full, it gets heavy. And it doesn't want to work properly. I can't, I can't use both hands. Usually I can spin with my right hand or my left hand, but it gets harder and harder to keep control of the spindle without it getting really wobbly or get just getting out of control. And so yesterday or Friday when I was, yeah, yesterday when I was spinning the last bit of it, I dropped the spindle quite a number of times because it was just getting too heavy and it was bouncing it was bouncing right off of the the notch that's in here and just coming up and then it would drop and then it would get all twisted and tangled and very frustrating so when I finished it yesterday I was very glad and actually I pushed myself to finish it yesterday because I started on Tuesday I think it was weighing my fiber and I figured out how much I needed to spin each day in order to finish it by the end of the week and I did just that I was ready to be done with it I just needed to finish it so I could move on to something else I don't know how often I'm going to spin an entire four ounces on a spindle it just seems like a lot to do, especially if I'm going that thin. I'll have to see. I have so many nice spindles that I would like to, to use, but maybe I'll focus on just doing like two ounces or something like that if I'm not going to, uh, if I'm not going to have a full four ounces or if I'm doing something that's special like maybe that Angora, although... I think the Angora would spin better on the wheel. We'll have to see how motivated I get because I do like taking a spindle with me like for like for travel and you know when I go to knit club somewhere else or whatever. But uh, spinning on the wheel is so much faster. So that's my spinning for the week. Yep. So I'm working on the Polworth from Blue Moon Fiber Arts. I will be taking a spinning class on February 4th. And we'll see how that goes. I don't want to get into spinning too many different things on my wheel at one time. For one reason, I'd have to have lots of extra bobbins. So right now I'm spinning the Polworth from Blue Moon Fiber Arts and I'm going to need a total of three bobbins. Although I'm still kind of bouncing back and forth with that on whether or not I want to do a two-ply or a three-ply. My latest is it's back to a two-ply. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, we talked about the two knit-alongs, the, uh, the Colorwork Mitten knit-along and the Magrathea Knit Along. Both of them finish up this month. You have about another week and a half. Actually, pretty much you have two weeks because you're going to have until February 4th. Just before I record, I will lock that thread. So just get your pictures posted by the 3rd and you'll be all set. The Knit Your Stash also ends in January. We had a January month monthly challenge so we will also have a thread or a drawing for that thread as well and I think there's 47 or 57 something like that people that have joined up again this month so please try and complete the challenge because I think um 
I don't know what I'm going to do. I might start it in February, but I think I'm going to have it so that you have to complete the challenge in order to win a prize. Although, everybody who entered and won last for the, for the fourth quarter finished the challenge. So, I was quite impressed with how many people finished the challenge, but because it's a month, it's less yardage, but also it's quicker, so if you forget to update your progress, that might not work. So we'll see. I'll see how many people finish the challenge this month, and then we'll we'll go from there. If 80% of the people finish the challenge, then I'm going to make sure that, that you have to finish the challenge in order to win a prize. Also, I want to mention again the Snuggle Project. I have not started my Snuggle yet, but after looking at my yardage for the first two weeks in the month, and for this week, I am way behind. Well, I guess not way behind. But not where I want to be. Although, getting that yarn plied up for me this week has really helped because that BFL that I plied was 345 yards of singles. And the... BFL and Tussa Silk that I've been spinning on my spindle, this one, I really probably shouldn't count all of that, but it hasn't been counted in the past, so we'll see how I do that. But I do want to get my snuggle blanket started, a snuggle blanket started, uh, when I watch Dramatic Knits. Yesterday, I think I'm a week behind with that one, but I think what the episode he had, I think it was from the 8th of January, which I didn't get to watch because I had gone out of town to see my grandmother. And usually I watch his episodes pretty quickly. I don't know why I didn't watch it the week before. Anyway, he was showing some his snuggle blanket and I think it's the bamboo something or other the bamboo snuggle which I thought was pretty interesting and then I went to the website and looked at a couple other ones and I'm trying to decide which pattern I want to do first I'm thinking I want to do a crochet pattern because they seem to go by quicker although I'm thinking about using a DK or sport weight yarn and holding it double so Knitting on size tens might work out well for that. So I don't know. But you too can support the Snuggle Project and Sadie from the Yarnivore, who is the organizer of it. She is having contests, and so are Knittables and Dramatic Knits. So if you would like to knit a snuggle, you can post to one of their threads. Now there's, I've heard a couple different things, and I haven't watched Sadie's podcast about the snuggle, but you definitely can post in one of their threads for the prizes. But I seem to think that Sadie's offering prizes for, in her thread and you might be able to post in her thread and one other thread. So check out those podcasts for more details. I will link you to the Snuggle Project and to Knittables. I need to put in a link to Dramatic Knits as well. So you can help out and knit some snuggles for them. And I will be knitting my snuggle. Okay, so let's talk about stash enhancement. I got some yarn, and I didn't order it this year. It's from before I received my Miss Babs order. There seemed to have been some kind of a mix-up at the end of the year because I placed this order like the last day of the month or something like that. And the, they must have had some kind of mix-up or something, and they contacted me earlier this week and said, did you get a package from us yet? And I said, nope. So they said, okay, we are terribly sorry. We will get it right out to you. So 
I got it yesterday. And I purchased two balls of the Wowza or Yowza What a Skein 100% Superwash Merino in the with um uh, it's a monochrome colorway. And it's kind of it's a variegated not a variegated but it's a monochrome so it's but it's slightly variegated. You can see the the slightly variegated colors. This colorway is not sure. I think it says tulip. Tulipa. Tulipa. It's purple. Love it. There are 500, approximately 560 yards in each skein. They are 8 ounce skeins and I'm thinking I might do a February lady sweater in this. I can't remember what I was thinking I was going to make with this when I bought it. But I think it was the February Lady Sweater. So, there it is. It's beautiful, beautiful. When I put it up to the camera, it's a little bit darker than it is in real life. It is it is really a purpley purple. It When I put it up to the camera, it looks really more of a blacky purple, but it isn't. And then I also purchased, in the same colorway, the uh, Windsor Monochrome Sock Yarn. And there's 400 yards. So I could have matching socks to my sweater. And I also purchased this orange. Now, you know what? Orange is not really my color. But I just wanted something a little bit different. So I got the orange. And my friend Melissa would love these two colors together because her husband's favorite color is the orange and her favorite color is the purple. And this would make some wonderful striping socks for the two of them. But, Melissa, you're not getting my yarn. You're going to have to order your own. But it's very pretty together. So, that is my Miss Babs. I'm excited about getting a sweater started with this, but it probably won't be for a while. Oh, just too many things that I want to start working on. I just don't have enough time to work on them all. And I have to show you the little things that came with my order. For starters, they sent a little skeinlet which will be perfect for a sock yarn blanket. And this is, um, this is the Windsor sock. Is that what I got? Yep. This is the wind, uh, just a, it's called a Swatch Me, which is just 10 yard sample of Windsor sock yarn. And this is the Timberline colorway. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. Let me put it up like that. There you go. So it's the Timberline. Here's Miss Babs. Her card. And then I also received a cute little stitch marker. And I also received this cute little stitch marker that looks like a little ball of yarn and it's so cool it's so cool so more lovely slit stitch markers which I'm going to put in my knitting bag and the one that I'm most excited about that I've had to restrain myself about six times this week, probably daily. Every time I walked past it, I had to restrain myself from immediately casting on. And I didn't. I didn't even wind it into a ball because I knew that if I wound it into a ball, it would immediately get cast on. 
And guess what? It's my watermelon sock! I'm so excited. This is from um, Knit Pearl Girl on Etsy. And this is her self-striping watermelon sock yarn. It is absolutely amazing. She also sent this very cool watermelon stitch marker. And I will show you this because it just amazes me. Here's another card that has a few more of her designs. It just absolutely amazes me. The little, this one over here that's um, the little ghosts and the Christmas one and then the rainbow with the clouds. Her stuff just absolutely amazes me. So my guess is that this is going to be my next pair of socks. And in addition to the stripey stripe, I also purchased the coordinating colors as well. And this looks very bright in the camera. But this is like the red, the red, and the bright green. So it matches. And the reason I got both is because what I'm thinking is that I will use one or the other for the toe and the cuff. The other color for the heel I'm not sure. Maybe I'll stripe it. I'm not sure, but I'm thinking I'll make socks and little mitts, probably fingerless mitts with this yarn. And by having the extra um, coordinating color, it gives me more options. Like for the cuff on the, the mitts, I can do a stripey stripe. You know, not it won't be self-striping, but I can do a little stripe on the cuff and the hand or I don't know. I don't know what I'll, how I'll do it. But I'll figure it out. But I'm very excited about this. I've been waiting since last May to get this yarn. And I'm so glad that I got it before my diet started. Although, it sounds like the diet's going to be broken before the end of February. Because if you've watched the proverbial knitter, she's in the works of getting some I Love Fred yarn dyed up by an indie dyer. And that's going to be for pre-order in February. So I know that I'm going to order some of that because they're going to be doing a donation to a, I think it's a national shelter or something like that for like $10 per skein or something. So I have to buy some I Love Fred yarn because we all love Fred. But I've been doing good. I haven't bought anything yet this year. So... I've been trying to inspire myself from my stash, which I think is working so far. Anyway, okay, before I sign off, you've probably seen at the beginning of the show a commercial for Barmaids. And I'm excited to announce that they are sponsoring the podcast for the next few weeks. And there will be a drawing for the next few weeks. And the prize will be something from Barmaids. And I forgot to look. There's, I think, this week we're going to do um, a Lolo bar. So I'm going to open up a thread in the in the um, group for you to sign up to win a prize for the Lolo Bar. And if you have never tried Lolo Bars from Barmaid, Barmaids, you need to try them. Even if you don't win them, you need to try them. They are absolutely fabulous. I have to admit 
that I've been using Lolo bars for oh, a few years now. Although, I've only used them in my knitting bag until earlier this week. I found it, found the Lolo bar at a yarn store and you know, you try, they always have the samples and everything there and I tried it out and you know how wool just makes your hands dry. It just sucks the moisture out of your hands. At least it does for me, especially while I'm spinning. So I've always kept a Lolo bar in my knitting bag. And whenever my hands get dry, I take that bar out and I rub it on my hands and rub it on my fingers. And it is so wonderful. It absorbs into your hands right away. There's no greasy after effect of it. It doesn't, you know, stain your clothing or your yarn or anything like that. So you can use it when you're working with, with your yarn. It is fabulous. It kind of leaves like a little bit of um, a coating on your skin so it kind of locks in the moisture in your skin. It's fabulous. So I've been using it on my hands while I'm knitting for a, a while now. And just this week I finally started, thought, I sh I've never tried it as a body bar, but I'm going to try it as a body bar because I thought, well, I don't want to use it up, you know, because if I use it as a body bar, it's going to get used up quicker and I need to keep it in my knitting bag. So I have tried it as a body bar and oh my gosh, my skin is usually extremely dry in the winter. No matter how much lotion I put on during the winter, my skin is just by the time mid-morning after I've taken a shower, gotten out of the shower, immediately applied lotion. By mid-morning, my skin is dry again. So I've been using the Lolo bar all over my body. I just rub it all over. It leaves, like I said, like kind of like a film at first until it absorbs into your, into your skin. But after it's in your skin, it kind of locks everything in, all the moisture. It locks it in. It's fabulous. My skin has never been so soft and so nice in the winter time. So you have to try these if you haven't. You have to go and buy them. They're at um, www.bar-maids.com. That's B-A-R dot M-A-I-D-S dot com. Fabulous, fabulous products. Fabulous. I can't, I can't tell you how much I love the products. So, there will be a thread opened in the, um, the group for you to go and enter for a chance to win your own, very own Lolo Bar. Try it out. Just post anything in the thread. If you've used them before, if you've, you know, whatever. If you've never used them, if you've never heard of them, or whatever. Just post in the thread, and next week on the show, I will draw for a winner. So, thank you, barmaids. Fabulous products. I, I, can't, I can't say enough about them. In the coming weeks, we'll talk more about the other things that I've been using, but I just want to focus on the Lolo Bar today. And I think that's all I have for you. Yep. That's it. I'm going to go and start plying my yarn while everything is downloading and uploading and converting and all of that. <laughs> I'm going to start plying. I'm looking forward to that. I'll have that ready to show you next week. I'll be excited to see how that yarn turns out and how many yards I get. So until next week. Bye for now. I hope your knitting blooms. Bye.